Hi, my name is Ashley Gowanlock and I'm a Rick Hansen ambassador. This is my trusty friend Patrick. Patrick is the strong, silent type, but he's a steady Eddie who always does his job. And today, we're going to be chatting with you guys about the Rick Hansen Foundation and Rick's big ideas about accessibility and inclusion for all, in hopes that you will join us in making the world a better place for everyone. So like I said, my name is Ashley and I was born with cerebral palsy, which basically just means that my brain and the rest of my body don't communicate very well with each other. And the lower down you get, the worse the communication gets. So it's like my body is full of bad wiring and short circuits and kind of my feet are like, huh, what did her brain say? I'm not sure, I'm a little confused. Now, when I was young, I hated conventional physical therapy. But at the age of two, my physical therapist said she doesn't like coming to see me. So how about we trick her? How about we put her on the back of a horse and then she won't even know that she's doing the same things that I ask her to do every day. And my parents are probably regretting that decision because 20 some years later, I have ridden horses all over the world and gone to three Paralympics on the back of a horse. On the back of a horse, you can't tell that I have a disability. I can go as far as I want, as fast as I want, as the horse's legs become my own. Horses are my soul healers. They look at the world through unbiased eyes. On the back of a horse, I've been to more than 20 countries, and I've been able to represent my country in some of the most amazing international competitions. Things that I would never have done had I not ridden a horse. I've been bungee jumping, skydiving, and skiing. But as you can probably tell, I wouldn't be able to do all of those things without the help of able-bodied people helping me make those things more accessible and inclusive for me. So when I wanted to go bungee jumping after Beijing 2008, I came to my good friend James and I said, James, how much do you love me? He said, Ash, what do you want? And I convinced him to let me strap myself to him and hurl ourselves off of a bridge. Now, as you can see, just because I was born with a disability doesn't mean that I don't have an adventurous kind of adrenaline junkie spirit. And all of these things I've done because someone able-bodied chose to help me make my dream come true. Let's watch a video that explains a little bit more about Rick and his foundation. When I was born in Liberia, they said I'd never walk, talk, read, or write. But their words, I took as just another challenge. I pushed past every doubter, every excuse, every obstacle that stood in my way. So, what did you guys see or come to understand after watching that video? Did you see that the world was an easy place for everyone to get around? Did you see that even Paralympians who've lived such a crazy adventurous life still has so much difficulty even getting into some buildings because of stairs or traveling to certain places because they're not very accessible? Raise your hand and keep it up. And if you can't raise your hand, raise the free hand of the person sitting next to you. If you know someone who, like me, walks with a cane, or someone who is blind or deaf, someone who wears glasses, someone who has a learning disability. Now, if we look around, most, if not all of us, know someone who has a disability. And that's why we at the Rick Hansen Foundation think it's important for everyone to be involved in accessibility and inclusion. This slide shows us that one in seven Canadians currently have a disability, and that number is going to rise to one in five by the year 2036. Statistics say that one third of people with a disability said that they have been denied a job because of their disability. And 53% of kids who have a disability say that they have one or no friends because they are disabled. And those are statistics that the Rick Hansen Foundation is hoping to change. 
you guys have heard a little bit about my story and you probably have a bunch of questions. So I'm gonna chat now with my friend Lucian who has some questions and hopefully some of his questions will answer some of the questions that you have. Hi Ashley, thank you for meeting up with me today. How many competitions have you won with your horse? Ah, so there are lots of competitions that you have to go to before you get to an Olympics. So mm -hmm. in my career, I probably went to uh, 50 to 100 competitions. And in order to qualify for the Paralympics, you have to do well in quite a few of those. So I'm not sure I could count, but in order to get to the Olympics, you have to succeed at the world level quite often. What was it like for you to grow up? Yeah, I would say growing up for me uh, was pretty normal in the sense that I was born with the disability that I have. So I don't know any other way. So for me, uh, my life is what it is. So I don't think like, oh, well, I used to be one way, like I got hurt and now I'm different. That didn't happen for me. So I've always been this way. So I was really lucky in the fact that I had the same friend group when I was growing up and uh, kids were pretty nice to me for the most part all through high school. So I had a really good core group of friends, which I still have a lot of those people to this day. And uh, that's really helped me kind of be the person that I am today. What would your world look like if there was excel accessibility for all people? Ah, what would the most accessible world look like? That's a really good question. Um, yeah, I've thought about that a lot, actually, because when I went to one Paralympics in London in 2012, I remember walking through the village at one point, and I was just walking to go get lunch with some of my teammates, and I realized that there was a person in the crowd that really stood out to me, like, he stuck out, and I was like, oh, what, why does this particular person stick out? And I realized uh, he looked different, or he looked out of place because he was able-bodied. And usually that doesn't happen in my life. Usually I'm the one that sticks out because I walk with a cane and I walk different than everyone else. So yeah, for me, an accessible world would be, you know, like when you go to the mall and the elevator is broken, solution, you don't think about like, oh, shoot, now I have to climb the stairs. You just do it, right? Or like, how am I going to get to the second floor? It's not a question. You just know that you're going to take the stairs. Where for me, it's like, oh, that complicates things quite a bit. So an accessible world for me would look like not having to think about everyday things all of the time. Not having to think about the distance or if a car is accessible or how much something is going to weigh or is the door automatic or am I going to have to find someone to open the door for me? It would just be a world where there was far less questions about simple everyday things. Have you ever been made fun of? Ah, this is a good question. Thank you for asking. So I think I was really um, lucky in that I grew up with the same people going from elementary school to middle school to high school. And so even if I didn't stay friends with all of them, they all kind of like look out for me. And when they went to different friend groups in high school, they like told their friend groups, like, hey, she might not be my best friend, but you don't get the opportunity, like, you don't get to make fun of her. So I was really lucky, and that word just kind of spread, and I didn't have a lot of instances where people, at least to my face, made fun of me, but for sure there have been times in my life, uh, especially in high school, where, you know, like, I'm in grade 10, and the grade 8 boys say something, and they don't think that I can hear them, see them, or understand them which I absolutely can, just because I walk with Patrick doesn't mean that I can't see you, hear you, and understand you. And so it's just knowing who I am, and again, having a really good group of friends around me, and knowing that this person who doesn't know me uh, or anything about my story can say whatever they like, and I'm not going to let that hurt me, because I know who I am, and the people around me who know me and love me know as well. And so there's just certain things as a person with a disability that you kind of get thick skin or you're either going to be offended all the time or you're going to let some things go. I get to watch a little bit more about accessibility by this video called The Boy Who Loved to Move.
Rick Hansen, The Boy Who Loved to Move. Written by Monica Lee and Aaron Hodder. Illustrated and animated by Tracy Hayes. There once was a boy who loved to move. He loved playing, throwing, running, and he especially loved fishing with his dad. Even when he was sleeping, he never stopped moving. His dreams were filled with him playing, throwing, running, and fishing. All day and all night, Rick was a boy in motion. One day, he was in a terrible truck accident. At the hospital, the doctor told him he would never be able to move his legs again. Rick was very sad. He thought his days of playing, throwing, running, and fishing were over. Something didn't feel right to Rick. His body needed to move. But he was scared he couldn't do it anymore. I can't do it. There's no such word as can't, said his dad. Get your body moving. You can do it, son. So he tried playing. He still loved playing. Then he tried throwing. He still loved throwing. Finally, he tried fishing. He still loved fishing. Rick knew that he wouldn't be able to move exactly the way he did before, but he was having fun learning how to Climb, wheel, race. He even learned how to make his wheelchair dance. Rick was in motion again. Now, with his body moving in so many different ways, he finally felt right again. Rick wanted to help people like him. So he set out on a tour around the world to show others that people with disabilities can do amazing things. Rick continues to spend his days inspiring others to follow their dreams. And be champions of change. Rick was not only a boy who loved to move, he became a man who lived to move. <laughs>